Zeus, the supreme god of the Greek pantheon, was not pleased with the human population. Humans were multiplying, and this did not sit well with him. Moreover, Helen, the wife of Menelaus, king of Sparta, and brother of Agamemnon, had been abducted by Prince Paris. Paris had chosen Aphrodite as the most beautiful goddess in a competition that also involved Athena and Hera during the wedding of Peleus and Thetis. As a reward for his choice, Aphrodite promised him the love of the most beautiful woman in the world, Helen. Taking her to Troy, Paris not only provoked the wrath of the spurned goddesses, but also unleashed a chain of events that would culminate in the Trojan War. Menelaus, outraged by the abduction of his wife, summoned the kings and heroes of Greece to retrieve Helen and avenge the Trojan affront. Thus, under the pretext of restoring honor and retrieving Helen, a vast coalition of Greek forces besieged Troy in a conflict that, according to Zeus's designs, would serve to reduce the burgeoning human population. The imposing coalition of Greek forces, often referred to by Homer as the Achaeans, found its leader in Agamemnon, king of Mycenae. This vast alliance boasted the support of a diverse range of regions, including Boeotia, Phocis, Euboea, Athens, Argos, Corinth, Arcadia, Sparta, Cephalonia, Crete, Rhodes, Magnesia, and the Cyclades. Assembling an army whose number, though not precisely determined, was poetically compared to the quantity of leaves and flowers in spring. Among the combatants, heroes of exceptional bravery stood out, whose prowess on the battlefield was matched only by the nobility of their blood, often mingled with the divine. Legendary figures such as Achilles, Odysseus, Ajax, Diomedes, Patroclus, Antilochus, Menestheus, and Edomeneus boosted the morale of the Greek forces, serving as genealogical bridges between the gods and mortals. Divine protection was not foreign to these heroes, receiving direct assistance from Olympian deities like Athena, Poseidon, Hera, Hephaestus, Hermes, and Thetis, who intervened in the conflict, sometimes diverting spears, sometimes transporting the protected away from the dangers of battle. On the other side, the defense of Troy, under the leadership of King Priam, had the support of allies from lands as diverse as those of the Greeks. Moreover, the Trojans also took pride in their demigod heroes, such as Hector, son of Priam, Aeneas, Sarpedon, Glaucus, Phorces, Polydamus, and Rhesus, whose bravery was comparable to that of the Greeks. And, like their adversaries, the Trojans also had the favor of deities, including Apollo, Aphrodite, Ares, and Leto, who offered their support in the heat of battle. The narrative of the Trojan War, often evoked through Homer's verses, unveils a lesser-known aspect of this mythic conflict. The duration of the siege on Troy, a testament to its imposing fortifications. These walls, described in mythology as the work of deities such as Poseidon and Apollo, reflect the city's magnitude and its ability to withstand the assaults of the Greeks. This architectural feat, according to tradition, was the result of the gods' forced service to King Laomedon, a punishment imposed by Zeus for divine transgressions. The war scenario, therefore, extended far beyond direct confrontations, with battles fought on the vast plains surrounding Troy. These clashes, marked by the thunder of chariots and the clash of spears and swords, were the ultimate expression of warfare at the time, with combatants protected by full armor. The narrative intensifies in the accounts of the last year of the siege, where the confrontations reached a peak of violence and strategy. An emblematic episode of this period was the duel proposed by Menelaus, challenging Paris in hopes of a definitive end to the conflict. Fate determined that Paris would strike first, although his attack was ineffective against Menelaus's defense, whose response nearly ended the fight. The intervention of Aphrodite saving Paris from a fatal blow underscores the constant divine presence in the conflict, shaping its course in unpredictable ways. This episode illustrates not only the brutality of combat, 
but also the influence of the gods on human actions, a recurring theme in Greek mythology that highlights human vulnerability to divine power. In a decisive episode, under the daring leadership of Hector, the Trojan forces achieved a significant breakthrough, invading the fortifications of the Greek camp. This act of bravery led the Greek defenders into a chaotic retreat, marking a moment of triumph for Troy. However, the tide of battle underwent unexpected reversals. In a moment of divine distraction, where Zeus was oblivious to the battlefield's affairs, the intervention of Poseidon reignited the spirits of the Greeks, allowing them to reorganize and counterattack, forcing the Trojans to retreat. The confrontation also saw the imposing figure of Achilles, recognized as the most formidable warrior of both Greece and lands beyond. However, his absence in the final moments of the conflict was profoundly felt when he withdrew, overwhelmed by deep anger against Agamemnon, who had taken Briseis, his war prize. The situation worsened to the point where Agamemnon, faced with the Trojan advance, sought to reconcile with Achilles, offering him riches in exchange for his return to the war, an offer that was refused. In an act of loyalty and courage, Patroclus, friend and advisor to Achilles, requested to wear the latter's armor to lead a counterattack, a decision that would change the course of the conflict. Achilles, recognizing the severity of the situation with one of the Greek ships being consumed by flames, granted his permission, but warned Patroclus to limit his action to driving the Trojans back, avoiding advancing to Troy. Patroclus, however, carried away by the heat of battle and the initial victory, disobeyed Achilles' instructions, and advanced. In a dramatic turn of events, Apollo intervened, disarming Patroclus and leaving him vulnerable. Euphorbus and, later Hector, with a decisive blow, sealed Patroclus' fate, a moment that would further intensify the conflict, propelling Achilles to return to the fight, thirsty for revenge. The death of Patroclus provoked a profound transformation in Achilles, awakening in him intense grief, followed by a burning desire for retaliation against the Trojans, and more specifically, against Hector. Marked by a period of mourning, Achilles, driven by the determination to re-engage in combat, found himself in need of acquiring new armor for such an endeavor. This request was fulfilled by Thetis, his divine mother, who asked Hephaestus, the divine blacksmith, to create unparalleled armor. With unmatched skill, Hephaestus forged armor, using precious metals and designing a shield that reflected both earthly life and the starry firmament, as well as a helmet with a golden crest, preparing Achilles not just for battle, but also to become a vision of martial splendor. Armed with such magnificence and driven by uncontrollable fury, Achilles faced the Trojans, who, dominated by terror, retreated to the safety of their walls. Hector, however, found himself isolated outside the city's defenses and, upon witnessing Achilles' fury, attempted to flee, initiating a distressing chase that circled Troy three times. The capture of Hector culminated in his death, a scene marked by a lethal blow delivered by Achilles, which not only took his life, but also perpetrated an act of dishonor by dragging the body of the Trojan prince back to the Greek camp, exposing such a sight to Priam, who watched from the fortifications. Achilles' revenge for the loss of Patroclus did not conclude with the death of Hector. In honor of his fallen friend, funeral games were organized, a gesture reflecting the depth of their connection. In a moment of shared humanity, Priam ventured into the Greek camp seeking with pleas the return of Hector's body for a dignified burial. Confronted with the pain and despair of the Trojan king, Achilles, moved by the sincerity of those appeals, consented, allowing Hector to be honored according to traditions. At the height of the conflict, Achilles, whose bravery was unmatched, experienced a moment of unexpected passion. Upon confronting an Amazon of rare beauty on the battlefield, his heart was captivated at the exact moment her life ebbed away by his hand, a paradox of love and death that would deeply mark the warrior. 
Achilles' ultimate fate was equally tragic, meeting his end from an arrow that struck his heel, the only vulnerable point of his body. This arrow, guided by Apollo's hand and launched by Paris, sealed the hero's fate. After his death, a conflict arose between Odysseus and Ajax over the right to his magnificent armor. Defeated and consumed by desolation, Ajax succumbed to madness, committing acts of violence against a flock of sheep, believing he was fighting against his enemies, before taking his own life in an act of despair. Philoctetes, armed with the legendary bow of Hercules, managed to accomplish Achilles' revenge, felling Paris with a precise shot. Meanwhile, Odysseus, known for his cunning, infiltrated Troy in disguise, capturing the sacred statue of Athena's Palladium, a feat that further undermined the Trojan defenses. The ultimate strategy that precipitated the fall of Troy was the conception of the Trojan horse. Under divine inspiration from Athena, Odysseus devised the ruse that would allow the Greek warriors to penetrate the impregnable walls of the city. The Greeks simulated a retreat, leaving as a supposed tribute to the Trojans a massive wooden horse, secretly housing soldiers inside. Through the deception of Sinon, the Trojans were convinced to bring the horse within their walls. Amid celebrations for the false victory, the Greek warriors emerged from their hiding place, opening the city's gates for the return of the rest of the army. The outcome was catastrophic for Troy, with the city being devastated and its inhabitants massacred or enslaved. Helen was rescued and returned to Argos, while of the Trojan heroes, only Aeneas managed to escape, destined to found a new nation in Italy. The conquest of Troy, however, came at a high cost. The atrocities committed during the sack, including desecrations and unspeakable violence, such as the violation of Cassandra, provoked the wrath of the gods. In retribution, divine storms were sent to scatter and destroy the Greek fleet, greatly complicating the hero's return home. For those who finally reached their lands, they found further trials and adversities, a somber reminder that the whims of the divine and the consequences of human actions are inseparable in mythological stories, in tales of gods and men. For centuries and millennia, it was imagined that the city of Troy was mythical and legendary and that it did not truly exist. Heinrich Schliemann was the archaeologist who challenged this thought and, obsessed with finding it, discovered the city of Troy. If the city of Troy really existed, we question. Could the battles between gods and men also be true? What do you think? Write your opinion in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends and family who might be interested in the topic. See you in the next video.